no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raider Sport with Mitchell Rands, and on today's show, we're going to break down today's Raiders news and rumors, and these are going to be our three main talking points. Should the Las Vegas Raiders bring back linebacker Markel Lee? Should everyone out there be worried about Damon Arnett? And at the very end, a three-way trade with Derek Carr and the latest trade rumors around D.C. The first topic that we're going to get into here is, should the Las Vegas Raiders bring back linebacker Markel Lee? I'm going to give this one zero chalky heads. It's tuck rule, tuck that. The reason why this is being brought to my attention is because Markel Lee this past week spoke about the Raiders on his Instagram. Is it really that big of news? No, not really. But here in the middle of February, I wanted to be able to talk to you guys about something else. Not That wasn't basically just Deshaun Watson. So he didn't make the Raiders roster in 2020, if you remember. He battled a lot of injuries back in 2019. And a lot of people remember the good Markel Lee in 2018 where he was second on the team in tackles with 68. Now, a lot of people remember him also for being, well, number 52 after Cleo Mack. But he was simply asked, hey, are you going to come back to the Raiders? Are you open? Are you a free agent? What's the latest on that? This is what it was ultimately on Instagram. So he is Kells underscore Ocho. It said, they haven't called, laugh out loud, not even to check in on your dog. Which, two parts to that. Do I wish that the Raiders would at least see how Mark Lee's doing, not just from a football standpoint, but maybe from a human being man standpoint? Yes, I absolutely do, because I am a believer, once a Raider, always a Raver. I know Al Davis definitely would have liked something like that, but in terms of should the Raiders end up bringing him back, I just don't simply see that being the case, because, well, from a talent standpoint, overall need standpoint, it's not quite there even though the Raiders do have some key players, at least at the linebacking position, that are going to be free agents. Nicholas Morrow, he had a great year. I don't know if they're ultimately going to bring him back, but you make Nicholas Morrow obviously a top priority instead of Markel Lee. Kyle Wilber doesn't really offer you too much as a linebacker anymore, but still a veteran presence and a captain, if you will, especially in special teams. But I'm hoping that you get guys like Tanner Muse that can step up, and I've been saying it for weeks, make Jonathan Abram a linebacker. So one more time here, comment below. Type BB for bring him back or type LA for leave him alone. Should the Las Vegas Raiders bring back linebacker Markel Lee? I'm typing my LA. I'm going to leave him alone. Now, hopefully you guys uh, don't leave me alone on Sunday by myself. No matter what, I got to come into work on Sunday. How do I want to spend my day with Raider Nation? So we're going to be doing a Super Bowl 55 watch party start time 10 minutes before kickoff. So 6.20 p.m. Eastern time, 3.20 p.m. Pacific time. Join me if you're over 21. Make sure you got plenty to drink because... I don't really want to watch the Chiefs or the Buccaneers win, so I'm going to be drinking quite a bit. I'm just going to send out a warning. We're going to be having a lot of fun. I'm going to be trying to bring you all a Vegas-like tailgate right to your home. So subscribe and join the watch party. Now, speaking of the Super Bowl, even if you don't care who wins or loses, I get that, y'all. But guess what? If you can win some money, that's something I think all of us would care about. So if you want to go ahead and put some money on the Super Bowl, please, you got to do it down below chatsports.com slash Raiders. The best deal on the internet is 125% deposit bonus. I promise you won't find a better one out there, but you got to go to this link below and you got to use this promo code right here, Raiders125, if you want to bet on the Super Bowl and if you want a free Raiders jersey. Now, how do you get the free Raiders jersey? You got to be a BetUS depositor, so new customers only. You got to deposit at least $100, get $125 for free, and then you get a free jersey. It's any Raiders jersey of your choosing. We got hundreds in stock here. If all you heard was Raiders jersey, it's okay. I get it. Email me for some details. Raiders at chatsports.com. I will walk you through the process of getting started with BetUS, depositing the money, and then we can figure out where to ship one of these jerseys. It takes less than five minutes, and it's a free Raiders jersey. Come on. All right, next story here we're going to talk about is Damon Arnett and should Mike Mayock and the rest of Raider Nation be a little bit worried about him? I I'm starting to think so here. I'm gonna give it three chalky heads, and then I think it's pretty likely that Mayock is worried about Damon Arnett. So let's face it here. He struggled as a rookie. There's no denying that, right? Couldn't stay healthy, and he didn't play well when he was able to get onto the football field. And also, I will always give credit to Mayock because unlike Gruden, Mayock expresses his feelings. Mayock's not afraid to say what he has on his mind. Gruden, on the other hand, sort of beats around the bush and doesn't really want to upset anyone. But Mayock has always been a guy that lays it out there. This is what Mike Mayock had to say last week about Damon Arnett. 
I think it's a huge offseason for Damon. What he needs is the consistency of nutrition, a weight room, and a workout regimen. And he needs to apply himself religiously. We have no problems with his quickness, with his ability to cover, and his innate competitiveness. He also had this to say. And the other things, because when things come easy to you, you don't always work on the other things. And now Damon really has to focus on the weight room, the nutrition, and the daily regimen of getting himself ready for camp. I mean, there's no doubt about this. It was a bad start for Damon Arnett, right? I mean, we can all agree on that. Does he have the talent? Yes, but you do find a lot of times for some of these players that have had talent their entire lives, when the competition starts getting even, they start to struggle. And I'm just going to be real with y'all. After seeing those comments by Mike Mayock, if I would have saw my boss say those things about me, I would have acted really quick. Instead, he's partying on yachts, he's making music videos, and he just seems like he just doesn't care all that much. And I want guys who are putting in the work. Like, I want a guy like Max Crosby who's playing through shoulder injuries and working his freaking tail off every single day. My question is this. Like, I've obviously followed Damon on IG. I try to keep up to date on some of these guys. I mean, am I the only one that kind of thinks that maybe he cares more about having a good time and his music at this point? I mean, I hope not. But all I've seen through the entire month of February, through the entire month of January, is nothing but partying and music videos. Damon, I want you to have an outside life. You deserve it to have an outside life. Everybody does. But at the end of the day, if your boss wants something, you need to step up and start acting accordingly because you need to perform better because you didn't do it last year. It's as simple as that. And you have a great chance to be able to do that especially on a young and up-and-coming team. I mean, think about it. When you're drafted 19 overall, you're expected to be a starter, not just like an average starter, but a person that can come in and be dominant right away. Remember when John Gruden just literally yesterday talked to Richard Sherman and said, we need an alpha? You do need an alpha because you got a bunch of betas right now running around your secondary, not putting the work in. Well, I was a little bit off on maybe not wanting a guy like Richard Sherman on the Raiders, but if you bring in Sherman, he's not going to take that bullshit. He's going to be like, what are you doing? You're not concentrating on football? Get yourself in here. Learn the playbook. Learn your new scheme. Do whatever you possibly can. I understand it's your off season, But when your defense was historically as bad as what it was, there was no off days. No off days whatsoever. So give me this thoughts down here. Will Damon Arnett be a starter for the Las Vegas Raiders in 2021? I want you to type S for start or go down in the comment section and type B for bench. I'm going to type my S for start. Damon Arnett is going to be a starting quarterback, cornerback for the Las Vegas Raiders in 2021. He, it, just because, not that he has to be, he does have the talent. There's no doubt about that. However, I will say this. When I first saw that the Raiders drafted Damon Arnett, I know a lot of people got mad at me. A lot of people were like, Mitch, you're being too hard on him. I had a round three grade on Arnett. And if he doesn't start working harder, if he doesn't start putting in the work in, it wouldn't actually surprise me if he loses that starting job. But if I was a young man my second year in the NFL coming off the year that Arnett had, I would work a little bit harder. And I'm hoping that he doesn't get mad at me if he sees this. I know some players watch the show. I'm hoping that maybe it inspires him to shut me up. There's nothing more in my life that I would want for Damon Arnett to just flip me off honestly and say, shut up, I'm going to put in the work. That's what I want here. But I also saw this here from ESPN, and they did a redraft. Damon Arnett wasn't even taken in the top two rounds of that redraft. Think about that. I know people are like, oh, Mitch, it was only one year. You're overreacting. I do think redrafts, not that they're important, but at least put you in perspective. Raider Nation is an amazing fan base, but sometimes they're just way too much of homers, I'll say, for their own players. Damon Arnett's good, but the fact that people wouldn't even take him in the top two rounds, I do think at least speaks volumes of what they think of a guy like Damon Arnett. So coming off a year, we had 25 tackles, no picks, two pass breakups. Here's 2020 coverage stats. He was targeted 32 times. On those 32 targets, he gave up 26 catches, 406 yards. I know some of y'all be like, oh, he didn't give up any touchdowns. I mean, he gave up a game-winning drive up against the Miami Dolphins and just an absolute boneheaded play. Bottom line, all I'm trying to say is this. Damon, get yourself in the workouts. Get yourself, you know, train a little bit harder. The injury's got to stop. We need a little bit more production. That's the bottom line here. Now, getting away from Mark Kelly, getting away from Damon Arnett, you're going to see a much happier person <laughs> for the rest of the show. What are y'all doing tonight? Like, 
What are your plans? It's Thursday. I actually have off Friday and Saturday. Don't worry. You'll still get your videos. I promise you that. But what are you doing tonight? Throw them down in the comment section. If the answer isn't watch Al Davis versus the NFL, I question how big of a Raider fan you are. Like, I woke up this morning ready to go. Threw on my Al shirt, and I've just been hyped to watch Al Davis versus the NFL. It's starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight on ESPN. So seriously, y'all, check it out. Watch the GOAT. And if you want to interact with me on Instagram, I'm going to be watching it. I'm going to be answering questions. I'm thinking about even doing an Instagram live. So hit me up. Let's talk about what's going on around the Raiders. Let's talk about Al Davis versus the NFL. So hit me up on IG. I'm at Mitchell Renz 365 The last story, or maybe two more stories, if you will, hear the Raiders report, is Derek Carr worth two first-round picks. I'm only going to give it one chucky head. I think it's a small shred of truth. This is from CBS. So according to a CBS insider, he said, the Raiders will not get two first-round picks for Derek Carr. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Matthew Stafford, excuse me, went for two firsts and a third. And I was like, I personally think Derek Carr is just as good as Matthew Stafford, and he's younger, and his contract's better. So I was a little bit confused about the whole idea of it, right? However, you better get at least one first-round pick for Derek Carr if you do end up trading for him. And I get it. There are multiple teams interested in trading for D.C. But you know what? You should be interested in D.C. The dude's a top-10 quarterback arguably, has a great contract. You can't dispute that. So I get that there's a lot of teams interested, but don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at people for the, around the Raiders saying that teams are interested in them. It's a compliment. It just means that Derek Carr is a good quarterback and other teams want him. So in terms of is he getting traded, yo, it, it, I understand we talk a lot about it. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of rumors out there. It's still only one shock he had. Now, instead of it being 1% chance, I'm going to say there's like a 10% chance that Derek Carr ends up getting traded. Last offseason, same exact rumors. This and that, it's just bottom line, you got to talk about it. If I don't talk about it, I'm not doing my job. And if I'm not doing my job, there is no Raiders report. So I like keeping my job here. But you know what I did have to do yesterday at Chat Sports? I had to make a video around Derek Carr's top trade destinations. If you're curious about what are the teams that could potentially be interested in D.C., Go check it out, and if you haven't already subscribed to our Chat Sports channel, please do. It's at the link below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. The video looks like this. Click on it. If you just want to spam Raiders, hey, <laughs> I won't mind that either. All right, what's the last thing we're going to talk about here? It's about the Washington football team being interested in Derek Carr, and this one's three chalky heads. It's pretty likely. I actually almost made it four chalky heads, but until a – We'll say official Twitter account or an official person that I trust tells me, hey, that this is happening. It's three chalky heads, but it shouldn't surprise anyone, right? The Washington football team, there's a report out there that they could pursue Derek Carr in a three-team trade. I'll get to it here in just a second. Washington, they were interested in Matthew Stafford. Multiple reports out there that Washington offered a first round and more for Stafford. So with that being said, I wanted to be able to put it together a little bit of a trade idea here. So think about this, okay? I'll get to my three-team trade in a sec. If the Raiders were to receive a first-round pick, so 19 overall this year, and pick number 82, would you do that for Derek Carr? Like, so basically a first and a third-round pick, the Washington football team, they get Derek Carr. So let me know here. Would you make this trade? Type T for trade or... Play on words with Washington football team because every time I see their logo or name, I think of WTF. So type T for trade, type WTF for no. If I was Washington, this is actually a pretty good deal in my opinion. If I was the Raiders, I would absolutely do it. And the other reason why I would do it for Washington, they have two third round picks, pick 74 and 82. So you give the Raiders the later round pick. However, the only way that I am trading Derek Carr, and this is very, very simple is if you can get Deshaun Watson. I'm not trading Derek Carr for a first and a third to try to get some other quarterback. No, it, it doesn't make sense. The only way that you trade Derek Carr is if John Gruden and Mike Mayock know I can get Deshaun Watson. Now, the other thing about Watson is obviously he's got the no trade clause, right? He's also starting to threaten that he's not going to play this upcoming season. He's basically like, hey, I'd rather sit out than have to play and put my body on the line for the Houston Texans. Do I 100% agree with that idea? No. But the key thing about the no trade clause is this. If Deshaun Watson wants to play for the Raiders, he can do it. If he wants to go somewhere else or and he doesn't want to go there, he don't have to. So if he wants to be, if he comes to the Raiders, that means 
He wants to be a Raider. So here's the three-team trade that I tried to draw up here. If you guys like it, please put it on Instagram. I know I'm going to. So ready? Got it? Sick. So the Las Vegas Raiders, they received Deshaun Watson. The Washington football team, they received Eric Carr. The Houston Texans get two first-round picks this year, 17 and 19. That third-round pick that I mentioned earlier in the car trade with Washington, 82 overall, and then a 2022 first and a 2022 second-round pick. So essentially, the Raiders are realistically only giving up two first-round picks and a second-round pick for Deshaun Watson. So would you make this trade Y for yes or type N for no? I think this is a scenario where all three teams de definitely win. The Houston Texans get three first-round picks, a second-round pick, and a third-round pick. The Raiders get their franchise quarterback into Sean Watson, and the Washington football team, they get a quarterback as well. So if you don't type Y for yes for this one, man, I don't know what else I got to do at this point. So this is going to be the end of the video here. I appreciate everyone that watched the show. Remember, if you want to hit me up, talk more Raiders with me, hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRen365. And if you haven't already subscribed to the Raiders Report, what are you waiting for? Free videos around your favorite team. Seriously, hit the big red button.